hey guys very good evening to all of you welcome to the video number 442 in this video uh, we're going to learn how to use the access uh, arrays uh, VBA arrays and how to uh, basically make this uh, this uh, project in the access which which I received uh, from one of my subscribers and student as well uh, Himanshu and uh, for those who are watching the channel for the first time this is my channel youtube.com slash c slash Ajay Kumar Parmar guys and this is uh, the video number 442 uh, I'm very glad that we have come so far and this is a this is a really really pretty awesome journey going so far we are um, going to complete 450 video <laughs> videos in the coming weeks and I'm extremely excited about it right thank you so much for your support thank you for everybody who is watching this video and who is a part of this channel and uh, I am really really glad um, you know I feel great when I see the emails from you, your side where you say that uh, you are clearing your Excel interviews you are clearing your uh, VBA interviews um, by taking the help of this channel and th this channel videos are also going uh, you know helping you a lot in in making the project so that's that's a great news for you for me so uh, and then so I mean you know in order to uh, make sure that every video is a unique every video when you watch you don't feel that your time is you know is <laughs> wasted uh, this is the another video which I'm really really you know very excited about it because this is going to be the access VBA and a lot of you have requested that I really don't have so much of the videos on the access right so let's go and let us see what actually subscriber has to say first of all so this is the email I got it uh, from him. Uh, the email says that uh, Hi Ajay, as um, discussed uh, with you in the morning, need to develop the query which can provide the results like this. So basically, guys, what happens? We have a one table where we have the issues: issue one, issue one, issue two, issue three, issue three. So basically, these are the let's say the ticket numbers which are repeated, and we have the engineer names assigned to it. Now, what actually we want is this table too. So if the issue one is assigned to Amit first, and then to somebody you know Ajay, and then again if it is a to somebody else we should actually see their name in the single column so issue one actually uh, was being worked you know by uh, Amit Ajay and then issue two was worked by Manshu issue three was worked by Dean CN Saurabh and so on right so this is what exactly we're going to talk about this video and uh, as um, if you if you're new to the channel then these are all the playlist when you uh, land up on my page the front page you click on the playlist and uh, in that playlist you get to see here these all different category uh, you know the, uh, the playlist on the excel vba on excel access front end and access vba and these are all the the number of the videos which you can watch there and these, this is a proper sequence you should watch right now i'm talking going to talk about the access vba so you should if you don't have any knowledge about the access vba address please go and watch this access VB RS playlist right so in this video uh, I have already created the table this is the table in front of you which which was shared uh, by Himanshu so we have here issue 1 uh, it, it is repeating uh, issue 2 issue 3 issue 4 so we have some issues they are uh, you know repeated and we have got the engineers and now we want to see that so uh, this issue actually is you know who actually has worked on this right so who all have worked on this issue right so this is what we want to do now before we start the access video what we want to do is the first step which we are going to do here is we are actually going to remove the duplicates from this guys okay so I'm simply going to remove the duplicates from here now you can uh, do this uh, you can copy this and you can go in the Excel and you can remove the duplicates from there as well for example you can go to the sheet 2 and you just paste the data there and then you go in the data and you can you know remove the duplicates you can use this um, there's an option here called the remove duplicate uh, this is the one right so you can remove this press ok and the issues for duplicate values was removed found and removed so you can copy this and make a table of this access in the uh, you can make a table in the access right the another way is that which I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to run the query so what I will do is I will run the query every time when I have to run this code I will first of all run this query so what we will do is uh, I'm going to select that my first of all the table which is this table and then uh, you simply go here and drag this and when you click on the view this is going to tell you all the issues and the point is issue 1 because it is repeating you can see that we have the issue 1 here issue 2 issue 3 they are all repeated so what we will do we will go in the SQL view guys and in the SQL view you just write here distinct so I'm just going to write here distinct distinct means that anything which is repeated that will be removed now if I run this back oops I got the error so what what's wrong I think my mistake it's actually distinct right so when I run this query let's see what's gonna happen 
So there we go. You can see that issue 1, issue 2, issue 3, issue 4, issue 4, um, 5 and 6. So these are the issues which are coming and this is what exactly I need. So I want to save this query, yes. So I can write there, uh, maybe I can give it a name called distinct query, okay. So this is what I'm going to do. Now once I have this distinct query, you know, done, then I will go ahead and uh, I will, uh, you know, go in this query and I'm going to create an array. And then that, that array will be created and then we will do the comparison by creating that array with this uh, table, right? We will run the loop and this is how, you know, we're going to sort out this issue. So I go in the um, database table, visual basic, I'm going to insert a new module. So there we go, insert module and this is where we will start. So the first thing which I'm going to do is, uh, let us say, uh, so define our array, define array list. Okay, so this is what, or ticket list, whatever you want to call it. So the first thing which I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to define my uh, database, which is uh, the current database. So I use the DO, uh, this DO actually stands for Data Access Object Library, which is the by default library if you're using 2007 or 2007 onwards access version, right? So this is a, a library I'm going to, going to use and I'll declare my this as a database, set db equals to current database. This, these lines are not really important if you're working in the present database, right? But I still write it, right? You can start your code directly from the record set as well. Dim rs as uh, do record set. If you don't have any information about the record set, please go and watch the access VB introduction playlist, guys. You will find there the answer of, of you know, this, what are the record sets. Record set is nothing, it's just a bunch of information, right? It's actually an information. It's a, it's a table which gives you the information. Now, table can be a table, a table can be a query, you know, so that depends. It can be a SQL query. So set record set. Now what I want to do is I want to uh, open the record set. What is the record set? Uh, my record set this time is going to be my query. And uh, so the query name which I given is, uh, I think it was uh, distinct or what? Uh, just yeah distinct query okay so distinct underscore query so this is what I'm going to write within the quotes and make sure the spellings should be correct so distinct query that's my query so this is my record set okay so whenever I run this uh, line what will happen this record set you know will fetch this uh, distinct query information and then we will have the you know these basically this in the memory we will have this table coming right which you won't be able to see but then you will run the array now so what we're going to do uh, we're going to simply run the array uh, and to create the array first of all i'll define uh, dim my array let's say i define like this and i'm going to create it as empty string you choose the string data type because your array is going to hold issue one issue two issue three and sort of that stuff now that uh, for one, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually find it out in a variable called let's say var equals to that how many record sets we have in this uh, you know the table uh, in this query right so this is going to give you the var is going to give you the number of records right now i have six records and then you define your array again by using the re redimension word right my array and then i'm going to put that var here you know this is how we do it and uh, of course we need to define this so i just copy this and i define it here somewhere here okay as long okay so now once you have the array uh, created by that number uh, we will run the loop so what we're going to do we're going to run the loop and i'm going to write for j equals to um so let's say the array we will start from the one and then it should go to the um, upper bound of the array. Upper bound is a function, guys, which returns the highest position of your array. So this is what I'm going to do for j equals to 1 to next j. And then here in this loop, I'm just going to write my array and j equals to uh, the value of the record set, right? So the record set value is going to be fields, rs dot fields. And what is the field name here? The field name is actually issues, right? And this is what I'm going to write. So dot value and make sure your packet set move to the next. So this is what we are going to do. Now I know it may not be making us so much of a sense right now for you uh, because I'm going a little quick, but once I explain, you know, once we run on this, once we debug the code, you will understand. But as I said, guys, this is not a basic video. This is extreme inside of the VBA. And if you know the access VBA and uh, the arrays, if you know the access arrays, and if you know uh, how to work, how to define the tables, this is going to make a lot of sense. But don't worry, I'm, it's not that I'm not explaining, I'm, I'm avoiding it, but, uh, but I have already you know talked about all these things in those videos so as i said go to the playlist on the channel this is the playlist which you need to watch access vb introduction and access vb arrays and then you can come back and watch this video it's going to make a lot of sense to you right all right so but otherwise also you can stick to this uh, uh, if you are very curious uh, uh, curious and if, 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 if you are somebody who is who has some plans in the future to learn the access vba i think this is a perfect 
uh, video for you right so now what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to simply run this uh, let's run this a variable not defined which variable I'm ta okay so I think uh, I forgot to put the double quotes because you should put the double quotes in the field okay so now we go ahead and this is what now the record set is created in the memory and this is going to pull out the all the records from the distinct query and these are all the records I have already opened it now I'm gonna run this guys and let let's see what's going it, it is going to give you so look at this so this record set the total number of records are six which makes sense because you can see here this is one of six also says so now this array uh, if I put the watch code I right click on it and I put the watch you would see that it created six uh, spaces it uh, six indexes actually for the array you can see that this is how it is created wonderful right so we have got the arrays and now I'm going to run this so this is going to work from 1 to 6 okay but the point is I forgot to mention one thing that by default the array starts with 0 right so what you can do is you can actually start this from the 0 and uh, yeah that's it I think this is how it is going to work right so it is so let's run this and now when it is going to run it will pick up the values from this field issues so we should have here issue 1 issue 2 issue 3 issue 4 issue 5 and issue 6 one by one so look at this guys we got the issue 1 issue 2 issue 4 issue 5 and then issue 6 and then uh, no current record all right so this is because uh, if you're using 0 then 0 means 0 to 6 means 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 which means 7 times so I think I should subtract minus 1 from here okay so this is how the loop is going to work if you don't want to use this if you don't like this one idea the concept of one, uh, the zero the index because by default array starts with the zero you know you can simply start with the one as well and on the top you just write here option base space one on the top you have to write it when you write the option base one then what happens your array starts with the one index now have a look here again look at this now it is not starting from the zero so i'm going to fill this array quickly and there we go so once you have the array completed now what we will do we will uh, do the comparison with every record we are going to compare this issue one with my all the table entries one by one this is what we are going to do so now here what you will do is put the comment here and now here we are going to do the comparison okay the comparison between arrays and table record set table record right so let me reset the code and now let's go and uh, create another uh, record set so I'm gonna create here dim rs let's say 2 as do record set and this time your record set 2 is going to be your uh, db dot open open record set and the name of that table is going to be issues right this is the one once it is defined and open in the v way we are going to run the loop right so what we will do uh, we will run uh, this loop so because when I, once, once I'm going to open this it has to run you know till the last record so what you can do is this time you can use the do while loop or I think you can use the that for j equals to 1 to the last record as well so I think both the options are fine but I'm just going to use the do while so uh, I write here do while not record set to end of the file this is how we write dot end of the file this means guys that it's going to run until it reaches the last row so you don't have to do anything make sure before before you run this it should actually first start from the from the very first record now when I say record what does that mean this is the first record this is the second record uh, this is the third record this is the fourth record in this record set record set means which, which means the record set means it's the information that the table we are referring to the issues table right now okay so this is how it is and um, and one thing I uh, was thinking uh, well that's okay I, I just thought that maybe I can ch I, I, I would go and change the name of the table because the field name is also same but that's okay let's see okay so now uh, every time when the loop runs you have to do the comparison now how you going to do the comparison with the arrays created so what you will do the first time when when the loop runs so what you're going to do so how many arrays we have created so far this is the important thing for us so we we are going to run this for L bound of my array lower bound which means this is going to be my array so it has to run from the very first position to the last position of array which means if I created six arrays it has to start from one and the six times the loop is going to run you know this is how we write right next and then let's say next to j so this is what I'm going to write j equals to one two six because you know that in your query in your distinct query you have six records which are coming so these are the six 
positions of array array 1 array 2 array 3 array 4 array 5 and array 6 but the point is each time when this runs this issue 1 has to be compared with these all the records which are 10 so that means that actually this loop is going to run 6 multiplied by 10 60 times right but you don't have to worry because this is the VB is going to take care of it when the first time the loop runs where uh, when it is going to capture this array value so this is what you will write uh, you you will further go ahead and uh, run this loop uh, in this way so what we're going to do we're going to say that if uh, if the record head the first record head so the field is rs2 dot fields and the field name is issues right so I'm gonna write here issues if the value in that field set is equals to the value in the array the first array my array and then you're gonna write here uh, j because j is the first time when the j starts it's going to be one right if that value is equals to this j then what we need to do is then we're going to actually we're going to capture that value so i'm going to capture that value uh, here in the store equals to uh, store store is just a word you can use anything right guys so i'm going to use this with the comma i'll tell you the reason for this and then we're going to capture the value so uh, so which engineer well uh, because you know if, if issue one is going to be equals to that uh, the array then we would like to capture the engineer so you are going to write here rs2 dot field and then we're going to write engineer right like this dot value because we need the this engineer name right and then if it is not the case then else and if that's it right now I'm just thinking that if I run this uh, is it going to work because we have to see uh, whether this loop is perfect I mean we are supposed to run this loop like this I think we should actually take this loop outside uh, of this so we, we actually should write the loop here and uh, this next J we should not write it here so what I'm going to do is so guys uh, uh, these are the things you know you're supposed to take care of once I run the program you will understand what I'm saying I know I'm a little expert in this so that's why you know I'm thinking uh, I can think before writing the code but you know it takes time and once once you may do the practice you will be able to think in advance right before writing the code so I think uh, we are done with this and this is what we're gonna write all right so um, so first of all let us see wh what we are going to do here so let's run this uh, variable not defined to I actually should declare the variable here so this part actually in this part we are creating the array that's it so I declare the store as well store as string this is what I'm going to declare as string so let me run this and uh, let, let me just uh, declare everything in one line so that we can have a more space here guys and you can see the code and this is what it is let me declare everything in one line right i hope you know that we can declare everything in one line as well when it, when it is all about the giving the dimension so this is the entire code and this is what we are going to do here all right so yeah so so we already know that this is going to work um uh, till this point where we have we are going to create the array so i just put the break code here okay I put the break code here let me run this quickly f5 and there we go I'm going to show you how it looks uh, in the watch window how the array is going to look so we have here the arrays and we got the issue 1 2 3 4 5 6 right now we're going to open the table guys uh, uh, this record set 2 is going to represent the issues which is the table which is this table and this is the table you can see here it's going to be opened in the memory and now we're going to run this how many times L bound which is the lower position lower bound of this array which is obviously 1 to the upper bound the upper bound actually is going to be 6 right so this loop will run 6 times right and now I have to see that uh, so the first time it is running and the first time when it is running so this J remember this uh, J in the comparison I'm going to use this J look at this J right so when, when I run this J becomes what J is your one right if I put the watch code or maybe I hover my mouse here you see that the J is one remember this J one right now the table is already opened in the memory and now this is uh, you know it, it, it is going to move to the first record and now we're going to run this till the time we are not on the last row of this issues table which means row number 10 so what is the first value let's have a look all right so we got the issue one here you can see here that under the field called issues 
uh, we have this issue one which is perfect right which is correct i mean to say and is this equals to this issue one yes it is because so this issue one is equals to this issue one so i'm going to now capture the value of abc this should happen because that's the engineer name so it should go in the then and it is going in the then now store equals to store and comma this you know why we are using because the first time when you're going to run this the store is going to have an empty space so it is not going to impact the store is absolutely empty right now but this value which which we have defined here this value is going to be abc so this is going to you know join with this empty store and this is what you will get in the store so if I put the watch code in this store, let's put the watch here as well. So you can see here, this is the store, right? So we got the ABC, the first engineer. Now this uh, record is going to again move. So I forgot to do one thing. Uh, I should definitely move this, my record set to the next record, move next. So this is what you're going to write so that it should go to the next record, which is issues two. So there we go. Now the loop is again going to work because now we are on the record number two and let's see what, what we have got in here. Remember my this issue one is still issue one because I'm not here going to change the J. J is still one guys, right? J is going to change when we will, we will have the next J. So now the comparison will happen with the issues two and with this issue one. So this issue one is going to be compared with this issue two and they are not equal. So we will go in the end if now the next record, the next record is going to come, which is now issue three. So this is, you can see here, this is issue three and this is my issue one. So this issue one is going to be compared with this one, right? So this is how it keeps on moving. It keeps on moving and so there we go now what is the next uh this record set we have so the next record we have here is uh, let me run this this is issue six so after the issue six we will have issue one so now we should have a then mode so this is my issue one and this is my issue one so both are equal and there we go now so finally guys we have this you know store which is already comma abc a new value is going to be inserted here right and this new value is going to be what this is again abc remember this is abc this is not referring to this abc this abc it is talking about right so we have abc comma abc perfect and then this is going to take me to the another issue so what i do is for the moment let's say i write there issue one just in order to check whether this is working correct or not right so now i'm going to run this again there we go there we go so finally we have another this issue one i think it's on the last record and uh, you can see that now this uh, store which is already abc comma abc this is now going to be abc abc xyz guys perfect this is what we needed i think this is the end of the loop and there we go so now we have the next j what is the next j well the next j is two right because this has to go from one to six one time the loop is already run so the next time when we have the j as two j as two means this my array two so we will have now the comparison with the issue two right now i'm going to run this so this process keeps on running like this so let me see that so there we go you can see that now it concatenated with the triple d so this is how it is going to look like now you're getting my point i mean i need some rectification here because this store actually should have been saved somewhere before it you know um, uh, before it, it goes for the second loop. So this DDD should come for the uh, issue two, right? I understand that we will do that, but this is working, right? So what actually basically we need to do is once the loop is over, you have to make sure that the store should be empty. So we're going to write here the store as empty, right? That is that is the first thing because once we are able to capture the store, then we do, would, no, would like to restart. And then at the same time in the store also, you should do one thing because you want to, uh, you know, store this value. Now, where you're going to store this value, this is also important part. Are you going to export this in the Excel or you're going to uh, put this value in the table, right? So right now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, put this value in the uh, table itself okay uh, in the table uh, which i'm going to create right now so i reset the code so once you once you once you are able to capture the store what you need to do is you need to edit that value right so once we once we are done with the loop guys here what we will do we will i can write the program here as well uh, but uh, or maybe i can do one thing i can call another macro so this macro is uh, uh, put store value put store value let's say this is the macro which we are going to create so here we are going to create this uh, subroutine subroutine put store val and now what we will do i'm going to define here a table okay so i copy this 
and I go in the create and we're going to create a table so this is where I'm going to create the table I control V it quickly and so this time we just need one header so I just delete everything uh, just go to the design view I think it created the primary query so final table this is or maybe just a final word I'm going to give this a name to the table and now we go to the final table and I make sure that I should not be using these IDs uh, if you want to keep them that's okay but I'm just going to delete them so this ID I'm going to delete it uh, there we go and the engineer is there and in the engineer yeah engineer is fine right so we are going to save this detail here and make sure guys we should actually delete this everything because we are going to insert these you know we're going to append the data here so your table is final and the field name is engineer this is what we need to do so this is where we will actually put the all the information of the store right guys so what I'm going to do is or maybe we can do one thing let's do one thing let's not create the another macro uh, let's write everything there you have a choice I mean so I just go and go here so once uh, my let's just close this watch window and here okay so here we're going to insert the data insert store or append store value in table final before you go for the next loop okay that's what we're gonna do all right so here uh, what I will do is um, I will declare one more uh, record RS3 uh, you can declare that on the top so let's quickly go and declare that here so I'm going to declare that record set 3 as uh, do record set and uh, we're going to define that as well so you can use this set word and we're just going to define here we can get that open here that's that's fine there's no problem so I just get that open record set 3 equals to um, db uh, dot or maybe I think uh, or do we need to edit it I was just thinking that do we need to actually edit this record set or uh, before we be, be, because we want to insert the you know the data here uh, so let's open this I'm not sure whether we need to open this record set to edit it but uh, for the time being let's just open it let's see so this is the table name guys I'm gonna write here right so you have got this record set open here uh, so now here uh, what we are going to do uh, you can use this line here as well I think that's okay we can we can cut this line to make it more meaningful uh, I can just define this line here as well right so the record set is going to open and uh, then what we will do we, we are going to use this record set 3 uh, dot edit first of all you will go in the edit mode because you have to insert that value so now what we will do the next thing which we are going to do after we get the you know record set edited in the edited mode you're going to add the value so I use here add new and what I want to add here is I want to add the store and then you make sure you should actually update it so we are going to write here update so that it should be updated right so these are the lines I'm going to uh, you know uh, use here and once it is done then uh, then I think what we can do is um, then we can simply close the record set so I can write here close okay this is what I'm going to do well let us see now uh, let's let's try to run this and let's have a look here uh, so we're going to start this so wrong number for argument all right so I think uh, this is uh, somewhere where I'm actually doing some mistake uh, yeah actually it's not a, you know uh, we should actually write this the field name I beg your pardon and we're going to write the field name which is engineer and then dot because this is something uh, you know which actually we want to uh, work because this is your the field name engineer right so the value has to be equals to the value has to be equals to store I guess we are good now so we, we can run this now let's see if it is going to work so there we go so guys the first time the loop is running uh, let me put the watch code let me on the watch window and there we go so we have the watch window now you see that first of all we will have all the issues coming here issue 1 issue 2 all the 6 issues are coming now we are going to open the uh, second record set which is which is this table actually this table uh, this issues and we are going to find out that who uh, you know what are the fields basically where we have the problem right and I also want to do one thing because this is going to give you the engineer names but this is not going to show you which field actually you are talking about right so I think uh, here we can write and and then you can uh, put this hyphen and then you can write the 
you know the issue name as well whether it is a number one issue number two issue so what I will do I will just quickly field uh, write the name of this which is going to be uh, or maybe I can think I think I can write here my Aris uh, J as well right because that is what is you know we are actually doing the comparison with with that value so now let's run this there we go so this is the one the my array one so we start with this now you know that uh, the first is the issue one so it is going to go in the then mode and now we have the store here look at this the moment i run this this is what it says abc and then hyphen issue one right or maybe i think you can write the issue one in the beginning as well that's all i think that that would be the good approach anyways let me run this guys so this is going to run uh, for every record let's see we have the another issue which is issue one here so let me quickly run this there we go so there we go let's see how it is going to look like so there we go and now we have this look at this so this is fine right so this is coming here as abc hyphen issue one and then comma abc issue one so this is okay i'm i'm fine with that again okay, now the xyz should come so let's quickly run this there we go so finally you have the XYZ it is again handled by the issue one engineer name is XYZ perfect now let's go to the loop so the loop is finished now because we have got all the records perfect now this is done now the record set 3 is going to be opened okay so we will have the record set open uh, this is the final record set which this is the open one right in the memory it is going to open right now i'm just showing you this it will go in the edit mode right no current record uh, so first of all what we will do we will make sure that we should be on the top so i'm going to be on the move first record okay so let me just drag this back pull this back and run this again okay so uh, alright so we have some problem here um, it says that no current record okay so I know that the table is empty uh, so I think uh, yeah if the table is empty I don't think so we need this line uh, let me run this uh, okay so we have a problem here guys it says that the table is empty so if the table is empty um, so if I just remove this line it, it's asking that it you know it doesn't have any record so how you're going to edit it but let's see if, if if it is going to work in this way so there we go no it's not so as it says that you know update or cancel update without add new so i got the point actually uh look at this guy so as i always say you know you really learn a lot from this now what when it says that update or cancel update without add new or edit so basically what is happening it is saying you are not using edit command or add new command right well i was using the edit command but it was showing me the error so i just commented it out you know thinking that this this way it would work but it is add new option is also giving so basically what happened because this we are not here to edit anything edit means that if the all there is any record you know which already exists and you want to change it suppose i want to change ajay to ajay k then you use the edit word right but here we actually are interested in adding the new record because it's the entire table is actually empty so we want to write add new guys this is what i actually i should have written it but you know this is a good learning for us now let me run this there we go guys look at this now now we have this value updated here the moment i refresh it it's going to show me trust me that right the moment you run this rs3 update so anyways now if i just click on the refresh let, let's see look at this this is showing great we got the value right so now this record set is going to be closed um, so now store is again going to be empty so there we go the store is empty now the next time when the loop is going to run so this is where the loop is going to run guys now now again the j is going to have a value called 2 right and you remember the j2 means issue 2 so we're going to do the comparison again right so now this time the comparison will happen with this issue 2 which is this issue 2 with my all the issues which are here issue 1 issue 2 issue 3 issue 4 so i should be getting here ddd and then i guess um, yeah that's it i think this is the only issue which i have gotten so i quickly run this and you can see that i got the ddd hyphen issue 2 i will quickly run this let me put the break code here in fact let's run this there we go so what the value is there ddd that's the only engineer which was assigned now we're going to open this again i'm going to add this again to this final one so we're going to add you know add a new record here so what is the new record this is ddd issue 2 there we go update it the moment i you know refresh it you see that 
it's going to show so let me just click on the refresh and there we go guys right you don't have to refresh it i mean uh, once you close the uh, once you open the table you will see all the values this is just i'm trying to explain you right in fact in the vba you don't have to open these when you run the code vba will open these all tables right which you won't see in front of you so close the table now again run the um, system again and this time my array 3 is going to run because now j is going to run the third time so now again i go in the you know this uh, record so again we are going to start from the first now this time the comparison will happen with what which value this value with the issue 3 and now again with issue 3 is going to be uh, compared with all the row numbers one by one so in the issue 3 i have agh and nnn and mmm right so we have three engineers so I'll let me quickly run this guys f5 look at this guys we got the result right now again the record set 3 is going to be open and we're going to add these values so there we go and now if i just go and click on this and i refresh it you see that i am getting the value guys right so i think this way that this is going to run quickly let me press f5 f5 and there we go finished right the macro finished i just go and refresh it and there we go we got all the values right now obviously you can use this uh, i mean you can remove this uh, you know this hyphen you can use the replace function or you can again make the program like that or maybe you can do one thing instead of this um, you know this comma i think you can create the space as well like this i think that is also fine right so if i just delete this table and i run everything guys now without explaining you anything you already seen that how the code works so now if i just run this code quickly let me run this there we go the code ran let's have a look on the final table and there we go no problem with the comma sign so issue one was assigned to abc then abc and xyz so you have a proper sequence as well first it was assigned to agh then to triple n and then to triple n so this is how guys you can make this pretty awesome code Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And thank you so much, my dear subscriber, Himanshu, for putting up this fantastic question. Uh, so I talked about the arrays a lot in my Excel VBA uh, playlist as well. You can go and watch that, the playlist Excel VBA arrays. This is the one. But this video is special for me because uh, in my this access VBA arrays playlist, I only talked about the basics of the arrays. But this is the first example, the real project which we have created. And thanks to you, Himanshu, for that. So that's it for now, guys. Um, I, this is this is how it looks like. You can see this code, and I can simply go and uh, put the backspace here. Just give me a second. Right. So I reduced the space, and now this is the entire program, which you can see in front of you. Try this and have fun with this. Any questions, you can leave your comments there, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.